Hello, and welcome. Today, we'll be analyzing the recent discussion on Vice President Harris' interview, featuring commentary from political experts including Michael Steele, former chair of the Republican National Committee, Michelle Goldberg, a columnist for The New York Times, and Tim O'Brien, senior executive editor at Bloomberg Opinion. Their insights provide a unique look into Harris' approach to key issues like economic policy, housing, and manufacturing. Michael Steele began by praising Harris' balanced approach in her interview, particularly highlighting her efforts to bridge the gap between capitalism and support for workers. He noted that Harris positioned herself as both a capitalist and a union supporter, which is a combination not commonly emphasized in recent political discourse. This attempt to unite these perspectives is designed to attract voters across the political spectrum, focusing on the idea of an opportunity economy that benefits individuals regardless of party affiliation. Tim O'Brien then shifted the conversation to the revival of industrial policy under the Biden-Harris administration. He emphasized how the pandemic exposed the risks of outsourcing and the fragility of supply chains, particularly in critical areas like semiconductors and basic manufacturing. Harris, aligning with Biden's agenda, is pushing for the use of policy tools to bring manufacturing back to the U, making the country less reliant on foreign production. O'Brien also noted that Harris is becoming more effective at delivering this message while cleverly incorporating political jabs aimed at Donald Trump, particularly by highlighting job losses in manufacturing during his administration. Michelle Goldberg weighed in on Harris' overall political positioning, arguing that Harris' approach is pragmatic and grounded in center-left democratic policy. Goldberg pointed out that Harris has often been criticized for not having a clear agenda, but her focus on pragmatic solutions for working Americans, such as job creation, wage growth, and housing affordability, demonstrates her vision. Goldberg also remarked on the broader political landscape, noting that both major parties have distanced themselves from overt populist rhetoric in favor of more centrist economic policies. One key issue that stood out was housing, which both O'Brien and Steele agreed has become a central part of Harris' policy platform. Housing affordability and availability, particularly in places like California where Harris has deep political roots, has become a major concern for voters. Harris' emphasis on new homeownership, lowering housing costs, and expanding supply positions her as a candidate committed to addressing one of the country's most pressing economic issues. In conclusion, Vice President Harris' interview highlights her strategic approach to bridging ideological divides and focusing on policies that resonate with working Americans. From reviving domestic manufacturing to tackling housing affordability, Harris is positioning herself as a pragmatic leader focused on tangible solutions. The analysis by Michael Steele, Michelle Goldberg, and Tim O'Brien provides a comprehensive view of how Harris' policies aim to address both economic recovery and long-term growth. It will be interesting to see how her message continues to evolve as the political landscape shifts. Thank you for joining me in this breakdown of Harris' interview and its broader implications.